Hello, this is Nancy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing some patriotic DIYs. I'm sorry if you can hear the rain in the background, but it's storming here right now. So I'm going to be using two of these picket fences that I got at Family Dollar for a dollar. And also some um, patriotic signs that I also got from Family Dollar for a dollar. I'm adding some tumbling tower blocks to the sides of the picket fences so that way the patriotic signs will have something to glue on. So I do that to both the picket fences and then I'm going to be gluing those to the sides of the patriotic signs as I'm doing here. And I'm going to be using some clips to keep them down. And on all these projects, I'll be using the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree. I find that that's the best way to um, glue um, wood pieces together. And I just clip them and let, set them, let them set for about 15 minutes and then continue the project. Once the sides are dry, I flip it to the bottom and I use the Walmart Jumbo Popsicle Sticks, the real big ones, and I separate them, you know, make them evenly spaced and I glue them to the bottom of the, of the box. And after it's dry, I cut off the ends on either side. I like it this way better because that way you have a nice clean cut on either side. Now we're going to start with the tumbling tower blocks on the inside. I'm using these blocks to make it um, compartments inside to have like napkins, knives, spoons, forks, or cups, depending on what you want to do in there. And I, I measured the inside of the box, so I'm making it three blocks plus a little bit more. So that depending on the size of your block, you may have to cut some. And I think I do seven rows high, and that's for the second, for the first part of the of the divider.
Now I'm pulling out my cutoff saw from Harbor Freight to cut the pieces on the either ends of the of this square. So I didn't have to cut more pieces of the Jenga blocks. I just made um, the the number of rows high. I think this is eight. I said seven before it's eight. So it depends on the size of the, of your signs that you have use on your box. So I put those at two rows wide, and then I I even them out on the the previous square. And again, I use my super glue wood glue and let it sit until um, it dries to in install it into the box. Like I said, once that's dry, I'm, I'm using my, my square here to make sure that the rows are, are nice and perpendicular. I put glue on all the sides that's going to be touching, and including the bottom. And um, I didn't show me painting, but this is whatever you want to paint, but I'll show it um, after this to how I painted mine. So there's very a lot of the possibilities on how to paint this. And on the holes, I added some carnations. To hide the holes but you don't have to add the carnations if you don't want you just put putty on those now on to DIY number two a decoupage truck um, I'll leave the, on the eye cards here um, how I made this little truck a few months ago it's from one of those um, trucks that have the like um, the center inside I just popped that out and added some Jenga blocks but I, like I said, it'll be in the iCards or in the description below. And I'm just adding some of this Dollar Tree napkin to the truck. Wherever I think it looks good and um, just keep on adding and, and decoupaging with Mod Podge.
Now onto the second side of the truck. I do the truck itself, but I don't do I don't add glue to the railings because I'm gonna be painting those afterwards. But like I said, this is um, whichever you can use any type of napkin. Some I think Dollar Tree has some like firework napkins that you can add. So it's pretty cool to use any napkin here. And definitely let everything dry up because it's easier to, to trim it off. I use my exacto knife and some of the detail of the truck I cut out and cut down the napkin that's overlapping the railing that I didn't, I didn't need there and also around the window. But it's best to let it dry and mix it for a crisper cut. Again here, you can finish this truck any which way. I'm adding some more napkins here and there. I do some of the antique wax on the railing, black on the tires. So whichever way you want to finish it off, it's up to you. This would be cute on a tiered tray or on the table, um, on your picnic table. Now on to DIY number three. I think it's one of my favorite ones that I've done so far with Jenga blocks. It's a flag. Not too, not too hard. I'm using seven Jenga blocks in a row, and then there's 13 rows, of course, for the flag. And then I'm using the wood glue and attaching each of the um, rows together. And then once that dries, I'll go back with some spackling and cover any of the gaps. This one I'm not staggering because I want the, you know, the rows to be nice and even. 
I'm not um, using it to, to hold anything up. It's just um, a nice decor piece for your wall. So um, once all that's dried, then we start um, decorating it. Once the speckling is, is dry, I start shaving and shaving it, sanding it down. <laughs> and I didn't show um, me painting it because it's red, white, and blue stripes. Everyone knows what the flag is. On the next one, you'll see how I painted it. And I also made a frame with the Jenga blocks, and I painted that black. And instead of flat, the Jenga blocks are on standing eyes. So you can have a, it just looks like a little shadow box. And then I used my Cricut, and I cut out the 50 stars for the, um, the blue there. I used the Dollar Tree clear contact paper as my transfer tape. It's never get, let me down. You're going to see some missing stars, but it's, it's still on the sheet over there. So once I get these um, down, I'll pop the other ones off. The, I think I need to clean my blade or something was blocking that didn't cut, cut them all through. thinking a Jenga block frag I, I, that's probably simple and, and to the everybody does it but I'm adding some Zen letters so I also use my Cricut to cut out a stencil of, of the word um, the word the letters USA and I apply it to the flag and I'm using the Mod Podge so I don't get a lot of bleed around the edges there and then I paint it with some Waverly chalk paint in white I do about like three coats of that.
once I finish painting with the white, I pull off the stencil and touch up any areas that did bleed because, you know, for some reason, some areas did bleed. But that's fine. And then I just pull out my um, pens and start, you know, just doodling in each of the letters. There's no rhyme or reason. You find a doodle that you like and just start adding it. I did a, um, an outline, a dark outline with some shadowing. In hindsight, I probably should have done um, just probably some three-dimensional letters instead of just drawing it onto the, the board itself. But either way, it came out good. So sit back and relax and watch me doodle on these letters. It's very relaxing for me. So it's, it's just something that you just sit and don't even think about it. I have some doodles that I like that, that I use over and over. And then I try to find new ones and see what I like to do. So I'm um, just finished watching this doodling to the end.
just pop in in here i'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by october which is my second year on youtube so if you don't mind just um share with your friends if you haven't subscribed consider subscribing and help me get to that goal Like always, if you're liking this, give it a thumbs up. Comment below which of the three projects you like the best, if there are any changes you would do to yours. And um, share with your friends and subscribe, like I said, if you haven't subscribed yet.
And until next time, be brave, be strong, and create with something red, white, and blue. Wait to the end to see all, all of these items on my picnic table.